to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 633. Listener feedback from YouTube. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check out some of the Mayberry Man stuff. Matter of fact, there's a great new Mayberry Man cartoon print. <laughs> You're going to love it if you had not seen it. Go and check that out. That, that's great. And if you like prints to hang on your wall, we also have a very limited edition We the People lithograph with Barney. Three pictures of Barney right there on the one. It says, We the People. And there's also a large uh, Barney Fife lithograph. Go and check it out at Weavers. Those are really nice, and I think you'd like them. And uh, I want to also thank our uh, patrons for Two Chairs No Waiting who have uh, supported the show and donate to it. Uh, I will call them out by name as we go along uh, in future episodes, but I want to thank all of you who are patrons over at patreon.com and donate to the show uh, each week. All right, guys, I am Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, and it's great to be in Mayberry and visit with you, and I hope you're going to enjoy uh, hearing from some of the fans like you who have written in and taken time to make comments over on YouTube. Now, we have an audio version, obviously, of this podcast, and most people consume the show through the audio version. But we do have people that, uh, that watch the videos, and sometimes, like last week uh, and the week before, when we're really, I think it's the week before, when we're doing things uh, from a live event with cast members, I do encourage you to listen, uh, to not just listen, but to watch the YouTube versions of these videos because it just adds to it, I think. And I am so thankful for everybody that's over on YouTube that uh, does that with us. So we got some comments coming up here. Uh, and I guess I already had them on the screen, so I should have just gone ahead and gone with that. We got one from uh, Seek the Truth that says, I love Mount Airy, such a beautiful little town. It was from the episode where I was talking about Mount Airy. Uh, we, they, they really enjoyed it. We got Al Abigail. And she wrote in and said, you and Jan truly are keeping the spirit of Mayberry alive. Coming from a younger viewer, I hope the podcast continues for a long time. Thank you, Abigail. And she was referring to that uh, episode I did a, a little while ago. I can't remember, two weeks or so. I can't remember uh, about the Mayberry magazine that comes out from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Uh, so thank you. And one of our younger viewers, that's, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the cool part. We have younger viewers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of us are not quite as young so if you are one of our younger viewers i'd love to hear from you you can actually write in like this and and tell us that you don't have to i don't know maybe you want to tell us your name uh, how old you are or not but it's fun for us that have been around for a while uh, to know that there's young people coming up behind that are going to carry carry along some of this mayberry spirit that we're trying to build so thank you abigail uh, I also have from Tim, and that's uh, I think it's probably the same one. It's from episode number 631, top that. Uh, it was, uh, Tim said he, he agreed that Jerry Van Dyke would have been great as the replacement for Barney because we talked about that in the, in the episode. We talked about Jerry Van Dyke and the character he played on the show, and it would have been a good – it's not really a replacement, but a uh, – a, the, the person who took over as deputy for Barney. I think that would have been really, he would have been really good. So we heard from Ronnie. Ronnie said about episode number 630, that was the Howard Morris in Kingsport, Tennessee, back in 1998. He said, another great show, Alan. I like, I like the notes that Miss Jan writes in the Weaver's receipts. They're like a little prize from a Cracker Jack, Jack box. Uh, something you look forward to. Uh, not knowing what is coming uh, and uh, it, and some r really cool stuff as well. So thank you very much. Uh, this is for, uh, from Weaver's Department Store. As I've said before, Weaver's Department Store has all kinds of Mayberry stuff. But it's not only that, Weaver's is run by my wife. Uh, you know, So she, she always takes time to write a note. And Jim Clark, who ran Weaver's before us, always did that as well. And in the rare cases when I'm actually helping Jan, I'll write a note too. So, uh, so definitely, uh, we feel like that uh, Weavers is just another extension of Mayberry. So we're trying to keep building that Mayberry community, just like we do here on the podcast, and just get that spirit of Mayberry out there to everybody. So when you order from us, 
look for a note because we'll probably have one in there. It may not be very long, but it's a note. So thanks, Ronnie, for writing in. Dave, he wrote in and said, uh, talking about that same episode with Howard Morris, it's episode number 630, if you'd like to go and watch it on YouTube, because I think that one is a good one to watch because Ernest T is on there and you can see him. And I just think there's something special about that. He says, absolute treasure. Thank you so much for sharing this with all of the fans. And uh, you're very welcome. Uh, I'm always hopeful uh, to find more and more of these kind of things. Uh, I found some recently as is a testament to them being here on the podcast, but always looking for good video from some of the events uh, that our Mayberry family friends had been in, uh, these cast members. And Dave has a really neat YouTube channel himself, so you might want to look up Dave Sundrum uh, when you're out on YouTube as well. He has a lot of Andy Griffith show videos so check that out next up we hear we heard from mark and this was actually from episode from quite a while back it was episode number 243 it was about parley bear mayor stoner himself it was part one of that he said he said i'm now a fan of classic tv and i learned of mr bear watching hogan's heroes in which he performed in four episodes his name is now on my dvr list of auto records and finding great movies and TV shows pertaining to Mr. Bear, a great actor. Thank you, sir, for posting this. So now this is something, if you have not seen or, li or listened to that episode, I definitely encourage you to go back and check out episode number 243 of Two Chairs No Waiting. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> so 243 was a while back. But it was actually recorded at the Lum and Abner Appreciation Society. I think I'm saying that the right way. Uh, they have an event in uh, Mena, Arkansas, or Pine Ridge, Arkansas, uh, where the Jot 'em Down story is from Lum and Abner, the old radio program. Well, Parley Bear had been on Lum and Abner, and this uh, he talked some about the Andy Griffith Show while he was there as well. So there's there's some really neat content uh, from Mr. Bear that I think you would enjoy if you go back and check that episode out. So that's the kind of the fun part about some of these uh, feedback episodes because you hear about old episodes that you may or may not have already listened to or seen. Let's see. This is from Abigail again. She wrote in, and this is about episode number 630. Uh, and she says, it's definitely on my bucket list to someday visit Mount Airy, North Carolina. It sounds amazing. And it is amazing. So I encourage you, if you get a chance, to go back and uh, head over there, head over there, especially during Mayberry Days. Now, maybe Mayberry Days isn't your thing and you want to try it out a little less busy. Well, there is the Mayberry Meetup, the Mayberry Meetup that we're going to be having. And it is in July of this year. It's going to be the 16th and 17th of July. Uh, in 2021 so the Mayberry Motor Inn is where we actually have it and it's basically already full but you don't have to stay there to be able to come to the Mayberry Meetup now the Mayberry Meetup is originally was originally started by us right here on two chairs when I went to interview Betty Lynn I guess nine years ago because I think this will be the ninth Mayberry Meetup uh, so wow nine years ago is when I <laughs> So uh, I invite you, if you'd like to come to that as well, you can come to Mount Airy during the Mayberry Meetup and visit with a lot of the same people that are in our chat room as we're visiting right now. And some of you that listen to the podcast, a lot of folks have been coming. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. We get together on the evenings of Friday and Saturday, the third weekend in July is when it'll be. And we watch episodes of the Andy Griffith Show. We tell trivia. We, we tell stories. We uh, have some of the tribute artists will be there. Just just there to enjoy Mayberry Fellowship. Not there necessarily dressed up in character or anything like that. But we do have a, tri we do have a uh, look-alike contest where other folks, not the tribute artists necessarily, but the other folks dress up in great costumes as people from Mayberry. And it's really a lot of fun. We've done that the last two or three years and uh, Steve uh, Jackson has been the one that kind of spearheads that. 
But I definitely encourage you to come over to Mount Airy with us, uh, either for Mayberry Days or May Mayberry Meetup, or just anytime you have an opportunity. All right, so let's move along here. From uh, Zane, he's talking about episode number uh, 629, and that's Newcastle 2002. It was a panel discussion. This was the Mayberry in the Midwest back in 2002. This is a, the part two of that. And, he, and Zane says, uh, that made me laugh when someone asked the cast if they knew who was Mr. Schwump. <laughs> well, that is a super common question where people ask us, who is Mr. Schwump? And we don't know. We do not know the answer. And they always go, did you ask the cast members? Have you asked? The we have asked everybody. Jim Clark uh, and many others have asked cast members, crew members, directors, uh Richard Link, the executive producer, uh, anybody that has ever had, uh, we've ever had access to, we have asked, do you know what the name of the actor who played Mr. Schwump is? And while everyone remembers him, nobody knows who he really was. At least not yet. We still haven't gotten an answer on that. And it's almost like, uh, I'm not sure I want to know at this point. It's kind of like when Betty said in those same interviews, she said, they, Andy said, what's, what's Thelma Lou's last name? I don't know Thelma Lou's last name. We need to give her a last name. And Betty went, no, 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 I've not had a last name all this time. I don't want to get one now. And so they didn't give her one. So maybe, you know, if we ever found out who Mr. Schwump was, I don't know. Then, you don't know. It's kind of like when we called old Sam. You know, they called old Sam and then everybody was kind of depressed and didn't even want to go fishing anymore. And until they let him go again, uh, then that challenge to catch old Sam was back. And so I don't know. I think the the hunt for Mr. Schwump may be better than if we ever figured out, actually. So I don't know. Oh, it's a hard one. That's a hard one. So anyway, Zane, thank you. Uh, I thought it was funny, too, that they asked about Mr. Schwump. And all the actors all said they didn't know his name. They knew who he was. Howard Morris did mention that Andy was the na was the one who named him Mr. Schwump. I don't I didn't remember that. So that was an interesting piece of trivia. All right. Next up, we heard from Tim, and this was a this was an episode number two hundred eighty eight. It was Ernest T. Thelma Lou and the Fun Girl Part One. That was from the um, the the Squad Car Rendezvous. That's what that was from. And Tim says this. Uh, this is gold. It's just awesome. I've been watching the Andy Griffith Show since I was a teen. When I was 14, uh, when I, I was 14 when this was recorded, so in when, the, when that particular event happened, I would have loved to have been there. Glad I now subscribe to this podcast. I've missed out on so much. Hello from beautiful Iowa. So thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you got to see this. I, I'm always... I wish we could get the word out to everybody about these events and about the fun things that you can do in and around the Andy Griffith Show or in, in the crowd with fans. And I'm, I'm always, I just wish everybody could have known about these events when they were happening because so many of these cast members, uh, Betty is still uh, around, but so many like uh, Gene Carson and Howard Morris you know, they've passed away. They're not with us anymore. So, uh, you know, I know you you guys have missed those, but hopefully these podcasts and uh, our memories help keep them all alive. So this one's from Abigail again. She wrote in. She, remember, she's one of our younger viewers. Uh, she says about episode number two, uh, I mean, uh, 629. That's again, that's uh, Newcastle from 2002, a panel discussion, part two. She says, I love how Howard Morris hasn't lost his energy. It's so amazing to see the cast again and how they're such a family. And yes, I completely agree. Uh, someone described it, and I think I've already mentioned it. It was like watching folks sit around at Thanksgiving, a family sitting around at Thanksgiving, visiting and talking, that panel discussion. Uh, was and I think you saw that and Howard Morris kind of took over the room a little bit and uh, everybody else was uh, chiming in uh, it was it's just fun to see and 
I hope if you haven't seen it, go back and watch episode number 629, and you'll be able to see it too. It's a lot of fun. All right, next we've got from Van. Van is talking about episode number 471. It's called Sheldon Glom, uh, Mayberry Squad Car Rendezvous from 1998. Now, Sheldon uh, was Arnold, Opie's buddy, on the Andy Griffith Show. And, and this uh, Van writes in to say, he's my dentist. And he's the best. I loved watching this. So, <laughs> so Sheldon Arnold is now a dentist in Colorado Springs, I believe. Uh, and he and, and Van, Val, I said Van, I think. Val is, uh, is one of his patients. So how cool. How cool is that? And if I remember right, Sheldon said he has pictures hanging on the wall of him as a young person. When he was in, you know, Star Trek, the Andy Griffith Show, and so many other shows that he appeared on, they're hanging in his dentist office, and most people don't realize that they're him because it was when he was young. So, anyway, so thanks, Val, for writing in. I appreciate that. Uh, next up is from Zane again. Zane's written in. He's talking about the Mayberry Man movie, episode number 627. He says, I can't wait to see Mayberry Man. In the words of Barney Fife, it's big, real big. <laughs> well, thank you. I think you're going to enjoy it. I know I, I keep talking about it. Uh, I'm in the movie, so I'm biased slightly. But I believe, even where I'm not in the movie, this is new Mayberry stuff. Now, it's not a remake of the Andy Griffith Show. It's not that at all. It's basically... Uh, it's basically a Mayberry event like uh, Mayberry Days or Mayberry in the Midwest and an actor going there and experiencing it for the first time and maybe coming to realize that there's something to this Mayberry spirit that we're always talking about. So it's going to be a lot of fun for this movie. And, uh, and I know you guys are going to enjoy it. So Zane, thanks. And uh, I'm glad you're excited about the movie. Hopefully it'll be out you know, in the next six months or so where everybody can see it. All right, so next up, I think we only have a couple of more. This is from Abigail again, also about the Mayberry Man movie, episode number 627. Uh, she says, I'm so glad I found this channel. I love how you incorporate small jokes. Only people who watch the Andy Griffith Show would know. I hope I can see the movie. I hope you can see the movie too, and <laughs> thanks for noticing. They are very small jokes, but I do throw in little tidbits on, on episodes where it's just uh, quotes from the show or something like that. And for those of us that are big fans, we pick up on it a little bit. And our final little bit of input here is from Craig. And it's from, uh, it's about Mayberry Days trivia, actually, from episode number 499. It's the trivia from uh, 2018 qualifying round. Craig says, just when you think you know a little about the show, you take the quiz like this, and it really puts you in your place. <laughs> I have to say, my wife doesn't wa uh, doesn't watch much, uh, but today she heard Leonard blush, and she said it sounded like Ernest T. I told her I was proud of her, proud. <laughs> uh, she may convert eventually. <laughs> so... So congratulations on your wife coming along. Keep bringing her with you. As eventually, Craig, she'll uh, she'll come along with you and uh, join us in the Mayberry family. We hope we hope for you. So she did recognize Ernest T's voice as uh, the voice on the radio. Uh, so that's uh, that's good. A lot of people didn't realize that that Leonard Blush is Howard Morris, uh, and you hear him on the radio. All right, so that's all I had there. Uh, so I'd like to, uh, we'll just run through uh, just a few trivia questions. I think we're going to just do, uh, we're just going to do, uh, true and false ones this time. Okay. So we'll do those uh, so that you can play along. All right. And then we'll hear from Randy Turner with this week in Mayberry history. So we got a little background music there from the VW boys and let's go. Question number one, according to Barney, Everything a Fife eats turns to energy. Is that true or false? Everything a Fife eats turns to energy. All right. So if you don't, if you don't know the answer and you don't want to know the answer, you want to wait and try to figure it out yourself, uh, you can pause the show and come back after you've got a chance to think about it. 
But here's the answer. According to Barney Five, everything uh, that a fife eats turns to energy. The answer is false. No, he said it all turns to muscle. It turns to muscle. All right, so there you go. All right, number two. Barney's father never hit him. True or false? Barney's father never hit him. <laughs> I love this one. All right, so Barney's father never, never hit him. Is true or false? The answer is to the question, Barney, Barney's father never hit him. The answer is true because Barney was a lot bigger than he was. <laughs> I was a lot bigger than he was. <laughs> I love that part. All right, number three. Uh, let's see, number three. Ernest T. Bass hit Charlene Darling in the head with a rock. True or false? Okay. Ernest E. Bass hit Charlene Darlin in the head with a rock. True or false? The answer is false. No, he didn't hit Charlene. He hug, hug it, hug it, Winslow. Caught it right here. <laughs> Married the taxidermist, so it sewed up her head. Yeah, that's it. So, no, he didn't hit Charlene. He hit hug it. Hi, get That's pretty nice. Yeah, it's French. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. What was that? Three, four. Number four. Emma Watson regularly takes pills that cost 10 cents. Emma Watson regularly takes pills that cost 10 cents. Is that true or false? The answer is, to this question, Emma Watson regularly takes pills that cost 10 cents. The answer is true. That's true. It's a miracle drug. It's a miracle drug. She left her dime on the ta on the counter. <laughs> she stuck in there and bought them when Miss Ellie wouldn't sell them to her. All right, number five, our last one here. Aunt B once portrayed Madame Curie in a Sunday school class play. Hmm. Aunt B once portrayed madam curie in a sunday school class play true or false true or false mm, that was a little hard but you got a 50 50 chance here's the answer to the question aunt b once portrayed madam curie in a sunday school class play the answer is false it's false she played the queen she played the queen all right so how did you do how'd y'all do how did you do? Hope you did all right. There's only five questions, five true or false questions. You had a 50-50 chance. So if you got three, you're you're betting you're better than guessing. So good job. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed it too. All right, so let's go in here from Randy Turner with this week in Mayberry History. Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. The Andy Griffith Show was a spinoff of the Danny Thomas Show. After its huge success, the Mayberry series spun off its first series on May the 18th, 1964. The new series was, of course, Gomer Pyle USMC. At that point in the world of television, an individual sponsor supported a series. In the case of I Love Lucy, it was Philip Morris Cigarettes. With the Beverly Hillbillies, it was Kellogg's. And amazingly, with the Flintstones, it was Winston Cigarettes. Take that, Joe Camel. The Andy Griffith Show was sponsored by General Foods, maker of Sanka decaffeinated coffee, Post cereals, and Jello pudding. In the closing credits, when the show originally aired, the credits rolled over a scene of Andy and Opie walking in the opposite direction down the path after a successful fishing trip. In these original credits, sometimes a static logo, such as the one for Sanka, would appear in the lower right-hand corner. Sometimes, there would instead be movement in that same corner, such as boxes of various post-serials popping up. In order to put the show into syndication, 
the stations airing the reruns had to sell their own ads and couldn't have the original sponsor getting free advertising. So in syndicated episodes filmed during the black and white years, there is simply a drawing of a lake in that corner, and in the color years, a drawing of a street in Mayberry. The same is true for many shows during that same time period. For example, in syndication, a large heart is in the background as the credits roll for I Love Lucy. But when the episodes aired originally, the credits had animated versions of Lucy and Ricky interacting with a pack of Philip Morris cigarettes, their sponsor. The Beverly Hillbillies even had an extra verse in their opening credits that said, Come along and visit with the Clampett family as they learn the simple pleasures of the Hills of Beverly. And that includes the products of your sponsor of the week, the cereals of Kellogg's, Kellogg's of Battle Creek, K-E-L-L-O-Double-Good, Kellogg's Best to You. General Foods was not just the sponsor of The Andy Griffith Show, it was also the sponsor of The Danny Thomas Show. In fact, when the public first saw the backdoor pilot episode, Danny Meets Andy Griffith, on February the 15th, 1960, The Andy Griffith Show was already a done deal, as it were. General Foods had the right, under their agreement as sponsor of The Danny Thomas Show, to be given first chance to sponsor The Andy Griffith Show before any other company. They liked the series concept and had already agreed to sponsor the new series before the episode ever aired to the public. The same arrangement existed between General Foods and Griffith Show, since they were its sponsor, and the same thing happened in the case of Gomer Powell USMC, but much earlier. Griffith had approached Aaron Rubin about coming up with a new series for Jim Neighbors, as Andy was sure they would lose him eventually if they did not, as Neighbors was so likable and popular. Using Andy's hit Broadway show and film, No Time for Sergeants, as inspiration, Rubin created Gomer Pyle USMC as a vehicle for Jim Neighbors to continue playing Gomer in his own series. Danny Meets Andy Griffith had been filmed in the normal schedule of filming episodes for The Danny Thomas Show. Griffith came to L.A. to film the episode while on a Christmas hiatus from the Broadway show he was appearing in at the time, and the episode then aired a handful of weeks later in mid-February. The timing was considerably different with Gomer Pyle USMC. The pilot episode, which was titled the same as the Hoped For spinoff series, was the 12th episode out of 32 episodes filmed during the fourth season. It was filmed over the three-day period of October the 7th, 8th, and 9th, 1963, but it was not aired until May 18th, 1964. That is more than seven months after it was filmed. While the public did not get to see the pilot episode until it was aired as the final episode of that season, General Foods did. They exercised their option and agreed to sponsor the new show featuring Gomer, just as they had done with the Andy Griffith show. But in this case, months, not weeks, before the pilot was shown to the American audience. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take care of yourself, take care of others, and take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Thank you, Randy. Randy always comes up with some amazing stuff. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on what Randy's doing on the internet, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com. Turnersgrade at gmail.com. And he'll make sure you don't miss out on anything that he's doing over there. So definitely something you want to check out because Randy, he, he does come up with some amazing stuff. Uh, it took me a while to find the pictures that went along with the video version tonight. Uh, so uh, thanks, Randy. No, <laughs> I do appreciate it. It's always fun. He comes up with such neat ideas. And so I'm so thankful that he's been uh, supplying us with This Week in Mayberry History uh, almost every week for years now. So I do really appreciate that. So again, I want to make sure you guys uh, know about and can attend, hopefully, the Mayberry Meetup that's going to be coming up in uh, uh, this July 
So I hope you guys will, will show up with us. Uh, I'm looking here. I think I, is this this year's? I got, I'm looking at the online stuff and it's the wrong year. So it must be next year. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've got the wrong dates on here if this is right. I can't find tonight's uh, thing. So anyway, so it's coming up uh, in July of this year. It's the third weekend of July. It's Friday and Saturday. So uh, consider coming and visiting with us. There are links in the podcast show notes that should take you right to the information about signing up so that we know you're coming. So go and check out the show notes and consider coming to the ninth annual Mayberry Meetup. Uh, you can uh, sign up there. There's a sign-up sheet. You can put your information in. That way we know you're coming, and we can kind of communicate uh, by uh, text messages or emails or something so you know what the schedule is and that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think that is about all I've got for us tonight. I hope you guys have enjoyed the podcast, and I, I want to thank the people that came to our live show, which you could be a part of, too, if you'd like to, the live version of two chairs no waiting is on monday nights at eight o'clock eastern time and uh, tonight i had a little bit of technical difficulty so they uh, folks in the chat room uh, and the live show stuck around with me so thank you for that as well but you can come and be with us it's live.twochairsnowaiting.com if you'd like to do that uh, also, I would like to encourage you, if you do watch on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to Two Chairs No Waiting. You can click the little like button and uh, the bell so that it'll tell you when new episodes come out. and You won't miss anything, so you can subscribe. All right, guys, that is all I have for you. I'd love to hear from you. Give me a call at 888-684-8415, and you can be on the podcast just like the folks that left messages over on YouTube for tonight. And you can just give me a call. Love to hear from you. Folks, until next time, have a great Mayberry week, and we'll see you right here on Two Chairs No Way. Good night, everybody.